All right, here's the, here's the tough news. If you're watching this video because someone you know sent it to you, that is because they A, love you, and B, think that you are unwell. And it's true, you are, you are unwell, and that's fine because so am I. You think I'm out here being well? No, no, I'm not. I'm not well, no one I know is well. You can't spit in my family without hitting someone who's been institutionalized, myself included. And it's very trendy right now to say, you're not crazy, you're, listen, you're crazy. All feelings are valid, it's all valid, false. We have, we need to fix this. Let's Clean it up. Bless this mess. No, f this mess. F this mess, okay? We're all unwell, that's fine. What's tough about a flavor of unwellness that manifests as hoarding or clutter or disorganization is that you just have a visual aspect to your illness. There's just something visible there. So that's tough. I've had some very hoardery tendencies in my life and I noticed them and I decided to make some changes. It's made my life a lot better. I was able to set myself free. I wanna set you free, okay? None of this, if you don't accept me at my worst, then you don't get me at my best. You sound terrible. How about just your most medium? Forget best, forget being your best. Let's just aim for medium style. Let's get your home medium style. And yeah, it's annoying to field comments from your friends or family who come over and are criticizing your home. Like, I'm not really here to criticize your home. I wanna help you, cause I bet it also bothers you. To, to varying degrees, it bothers you, and it's your home, it's your safe space. You deserve to have a, a safe place, a sanctuary, where you don't feel like you're trying to survive your own home. And it's a mess, so let's, let's kick it. Here we go, got some stuff to do. This video is sponsored by Brooklinen, and I'll tell you more about them later. I got a lot of stuff to hit in this video. We're gonna talk about why the system is broken. The system you're using is broken. We're gonna talk about the thing that is handcuffing you to a disorganized life. And then I'm gonna hit some, just like, I'm gonna do a rapid fire round of some simple things, some easy fixes, some easy changes. You don't have to go to therapy at all. You don't have to change any of your habits, just some easy visual fixes that are gonna make it feel less kooky in here, okay? The truth is that chaos, clutter, organization like it kind of it's a spectrum and we all probably fall somewhere on it and we might be at different places on the spectrum in different periods of life when things are crazier more hectic more stressful you know being being a hoarder that's an actual disorder you can s seek actual professional support for that and then there's a full spectrum and there's a little there's a little hoardery person a little hoardery tendency inside each of us there was a lot in me okay there's there's a lot to address here this is a camera crooked damn it Damn it, please, God. Okay. Step number one, the problem that we all refuse to accept, I am guilty of this, it's not that I need to buy more containers from the container store to organize my home. It's not that I need to have a, get a professional organizer to come in to organize. The, the problem is just I have too much stuff. I just have too much stuff. We all have too much stuff. I have too many clothes. I wear the same pair of sweatpants every day, okay? Don't need all these chinos. Our kids have too many toys. Do they even appreciate all these toys? No, take the toys away. Get, you get two toys, two toys a year. Then you'll have gratitude. We all just have too much stuff. They're making our lives harder by having it everywhere, but we also like can't really manage to get rid of them. And it's usually for one of two main reasons, both very emotionally charged reasons. One, it's a sense of frugality. I don't wanna have to rebuy I don't wanna to have to rebuy a disco ball next time I hold it to a disco party. You know, I don't wanna throw this disco ball away because what if I have another disco party coming up then I'm gonna to have to rebuy a disco ball? Waste of money. In the meantime though, you are paying a price. It's not free to keep junk around your home. You pay a huge emotional price and you pay a price in your home. It's no longer a safe space. It's now a cluttered space, confined space, a little claustrophobic. You're paying a price every day. You're paying a price in the fights you have with your family or your roommates. You're paying a price in your mental sanity. You're paying a price. Every time you see that pile of clutter there, you're like a little annoyed, a little irked, but it would be wasteful to get rid of it. You're paying a price somewhere else. And the other like main emotional reason, right, that we're usually holding on to things is sentimentality. You know, maybe somebody died. I don't wanna undermine the emotion there, but a lot of the time we're holding on to these sentimental things, sentimental things really just out of a sense of guilt, a sense of duty. Guilt, if we were to give it away, what would they think? It's extremely emotionally wrought. Don't let anyone under, undermine that to you. However, it, it has become a handcuff. It's a prison. 
and this person that you care about and you miss and you want to hold on to them they actually are not this object they are not this object they are not contained in it your relationship to them is not contained in it you won't forget them as soon as you let that object go that's just not how it works you are tied to the object from some sense of guilt or obligation something's haunting you right and this thing is not helping you hold on to the love. It's helping you hold on to some guilt, some obligation, some shame, some fear. It's not helping you hold on to the love in any way. I'm a very sentimental person. I absolutely keep sentimental objects. But just take care, you know, try to keep a piece or two will suffice. You don't need to keep everything they ever touched. It's not what a reasonable person would want for you. It's not what someone who loves you would want for you. And in this moment, you gotta love yourself. Think about what it is costing you. What is it costing you emotionally? And whether you're holding on to clutter for like frugal reasons, sentimental reasons, this is the key. It is really, really hard to give them away, but it is not so hard to just not have them. The not having them, like once they're gone, once they're not in your life, there's really nothing hard about it. It's just the act of giving it away that feels impossible. If you can just get over that hump, the not having it is very doable. So if you can just mechanically move through that choice because you know I'm going to give this away, I'm gonna take it off the shelf, I'm gonna put it in the bag, I'm gonna donate, I'm gonna burn it, whatever you need to do, run it through a shredder. And on the other side is gonna be some peace. And you're still gonna know that person, you're still gonna love that person, you're still gonna have your memories in your relationship, and you're also gonna have a little bit of space and freedom, and you're gonna be a little less haunted. Another of my favorite tips for getting rid of things, things we feel obligated to keep. If someone were to accidentally spill red wine all over that box of cards, how would you feel? Would you be truly devastated? Or would there be a sense of relief that you finally have a justification and excuse for getting rid of it? For example, I used to save every single written thing I'd ever received, any card, any letter, any, like a, a post-it note that my mother put inside a lunchbox when I was a kid because like, how dare I throw that away? That post-it note was filled with love. And eventually I was living in a tiny box of a New York apartment and like a tenth of my room was filled up with boxes of cards and letters. And eventually I realized I was only like 22 and I already had so many boxes of cards. I knew I couldn't keep I couldn't keep this stuff forever. I've got so many birthdays ahead. So many cards. I'm so lovable. This could go on forever. And I can't keep it in this tiny New York apartment. And so I just decided, like, I just flipped the switch. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not saving every card anymore. I will take, like, specific, really heartfelt letters that a lot of work went into. I'll keep it. But every birthday card, no. Every Hallmark card, no. If you spilled red wine on it, how hard would you work to retrieve it? Or would there just be a sense of relief? Ask yourself. As I've said, we all deserve a beautiful sanctuary of a home. It doesn't have to be expensive. As I mentioned, this video is sponsored by Brooklinen. If you haven't heard of Brooklinen, girl, where you been? I've had Brooklinen sheets forever. The last video I filmed was in my bedroom. I think I had Brooklinen sheets on the bed there. I really do aim to buy quality, like especially for something as tactile and physical as a sheet, a towel, something you're putting on your face, body, sleeping in every night. You feel the quality. Brooklinen is a luxury sheets company committed to making high quality goods that are gonna elevate your home. It's very simple. Girl, please don't get me started about the Brooklinen towels. These I won't shut up. These are the softest towels I have ever touched and I don't wanna hear another word about it. I recommend the Super Plush Towel Move-In Bundle, which includes everything you need for a spa-like setup. Bath towels, bath mat, hand towels, washcloths, so you can just have a unified set. Done, boom, chaos eliminated. If you're looking for a quick, easy upgrade for your home, it's just the softest thing you're ever gonna put on your body. It makes such a difference. You know, it's one of those tactile touch points in your home, so you feel the quality. I wanted these towels because it's 100% Turkish cotton. It's got that like fluffy spa comfort feel. It's very good, it's very pleasing. Not only is it like super, like super plush, but it's one of the giant, giant, giant bath towels. The big giant body towels, which are hard to find. I love them. I know I'm getting high quality. They're gonna be the softest towels I've ever had. I don't have to go to a hundred stores like searching for the perfect towel. I know exactly where I wanna go. And I recommend them to anybody who's nesting in their new home and trying to get things set up. It's a, it's just a, it's a no brainer. I went with a, 
classic white because I felt like keeping it fresh, bright, but you can do any pattern or style to match your preference. By far, one of my favorite things about buying Brooklyn and products is that you can do it all from your computer. You can mix and match patterns and colors, so it's just really easy to get like the perfect customized bundle for your aesthetic. Brooklyn is offering 20 bucks off of any order over $100 if you want to click the link and code in description. I'll put it right here. Caroline W. They have over 100,000 five-star reviews. Like, it's tried and true great product. I can't recommend it enough. No matter how many times I wash my Brooklyn and Sheets for comforter, it stays soft, breathable, comfortable, washable. It's really all I want to use. Investing in that and taking care of that, it's like a form of self-care. So, I'm all about it. And a big thank you to Brooklyn and for sponsoring. Let's kick it. Okay, I wanna hit some quick points, some quick ways we can visually simplify the chaos in your home. There are a couple different kinds of clutter. There's literal, actual clutter, clinical clutter, and then there's just visual busyness. You can have a clean or organized home, but something visually is driving me crazy. It's crazy to look at this place, right? It's crazy to look at it. It's crazy to look at it. And there are some easy things you can do that don't require a behavior change, that don't require any therapy. They're just fixes. They're one-time fixes. Let's hit it. Number one, there are too many colors going on in this room. There are too many colors, okay? Simplify the color palette. Maybe it's a ton of mismatched colored furniture. Maybe it's just like too many colored throw pillows. It can work, obviously it can work, but if you feel like it's not working, look at your color palette. Let's just intentionally minimize the color palette, okay? Maybe some of the extra colorful things go in another room. Don't have to throw them out. I know you have a hard time throwing these out. Number two, too much wall decor on the walls. Let me tell you this. Listen to me. Are you listening? I know that you are not. Please listen to me. You don't have to decorate every wall. You don't have to fill every wall. Give the eye a break. It's the same as like, even in these videos, even in these videos, I've learned you need an audio break. You cannot listen to me talk nonstop. So there are transition slides. There are pauses for music, for some visuals. You can't, you gotta give the ear a break, you gotta give the eye a break, okay? Let's give the eye somewhere to rest. It's just like, there's a wall hanging rug and, and too many frames and too much art and everything is full and they're all at different heights, like it's too much. Let's take some of these frames down, dog, okay? Negative space is dynamic space, okay? Let's put a little dramatic tension, a little sexual tension between some of our wall decor. The drama is in the tension. Cords and wires. Cords are the devil's playthings. They ruin the most beautiful home decor setup. They're super evil and they're everywhere. I invest a lot of time and energy into getting the exact correct extension cords, uh, cord unifiers, little, you know, you can get like little sticky things or little clips to like pin the cords to the back of stuff. It, it makes all the difference in the world. Let's just pin them or stick them to the back leg of the desk so you don't see them. Streamline them, okay? Let's just streamline them for the love of God. Open storage. Open storage is no storage. Open storage is a lie. It's a lie. Open storage is just uppity, high maintenance decor. It's usually not storage. On our open shelves, our open bookcases, like we're not really storing things there. We're putting things there to display things. It's, it's not actually usually good for storing stuff. Some of our mess we're gonna organize and some of it we're just gonna contain, okay? Some of it you just put behind the door. Do yourself a favor. You should not have to look at all of it all the time. Get an armoire instead of the open bookcase. For some things, it's just gonna be a mess. That's fine. And um, like for example, for example, this back here, hello, all of this is closed storage. You shouldn't see what's in there. I will never show you what's in there. And um, if you knew, I'd go to jail. Lastly, I think one of the biggest offenders to me, I guess this is a personal preference, but I think everyone can benefit from this. Sometimes you just have too much decor out. 
decor on top of the fridge, on top of the top cabinets, all plants coming out of everywhere. It's like theoretically all these decor pieces are nice, but it's a lot of visual busyness. You don't need to fill every space. Give the eye a place to rest. Personally, plants everywhere drives me crazy. They're out of control. They're coming out in all different kinds of corners. Plants everywhere, I'm really not a fan. That is a personal preference, but I've decided it's the law. Have your plants, have your plants everywhere, fine. But if you find that they're like in your way and you have to like circumvent the plants, you have to take this weird path around things, like it's probably annoying everyone who comes to your home. If you have to take a weird path to get around your plant, people are annoyed at you, your friends are annoyed at you. I'm annoyed at you, I promise you. So just, you know, think about it. You can give the plant to a lovely new home, okay? To a lovely friend, or maybe just push it back a few inches so it's not in the way. Let's not turn our plants into enemies. Plants are friends. <laughs> a hack I'll say to transform you from a hoarder into a collector what is the difference between a hoarder and a collector not much the difference I'm gonna say is intentionality being intentional with your hoarding it's a total trick okay lots of us are hoarders and we're out here just getting away with it for example you collect all these tiny little figurines, these little like glass animal figurines and you can't stop buying them and you're out of control and it's, you know, it's weird, but it's just what you're doing and you can't be stopped and no one's ever going to stop you. The difference in hoarding them and collecting them is just like, are they in a display case? Are they in a display case? Are they all over the home or are they in a display case? Slap those babies in a curio cabinet. And now you're a collector. It's intentional. This is where my little mini glass animals go. Now you're a collector and now it's cool and now it's fun to come over and look at your collection instead of them just like scattered all over the place and being in the way and let's just make it intentional. My grandparents, first of all, my grandparents' home was a complete disaster. It was a complete mess. Bless them, okay? But they did one thing really well, which is they had this hallway where they had hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of family photos and mementos and things hung up in the hall. And it was chaos, it wasn't curated, it wasn't designed, it wasn't everything spaced out artistically, it was chaos, but it was all contained in a hallway. And that hallway, that intentional hallway then became an experience and us as grandkids loved going over there. We loved the experience of being in that hallway getting to absorb all the family history. It was not designed. I cannot emphasize this enough, but it was intentional. In the hallway, there's this experience, this collection of history and of photographs and of memories. And it, because it's all together in one place, a dedicated place, it then became an intentional experience. And I've replicated that in my own home. I don't like having family photos and personal photos all over the place. I put them all in my hallway. It's barely designed, I just throw stuff up there. And when people come over, they love walking through the hall. So there's a lot of purging we can do to get rid of stuff. But there's also like probably a bunch of junk, a bunch of pointless junk <laughs> that you have that I have that you don't wanna get rid of. So for that stuff, let's just think about how you can make it intentional. What's the room it goes in? Or what's the curio cabinet it goes in? Or what's the hallway it goes in? How do we display it? How do we actually kind of hype it up and be like, this is where I'll allow this. And then it's cool, then it's fun. People are interested in it, it's not annoying. Next tip I wanna share, do not let someone else tell you what your organization system needs to be. Don't let me tell you, don't let your husband or wife or your child or whoever tell you how they like to organize, the system that works for them. Because clearly it is not working for you. The system is broken. Your clean freak friend comes over and you know, they can clean up your space. Your art room's always a mess, your craft room. And they say, okay, it's totally fine. We're gonna clean everything up and like see next time that you need to take out your art supplies, all you have to do is you climb up onto this ladder, onto the top shelf, you take a box down, slave it art supplies, get out your art supplies, then you climb back on the wall, you put it away. And it's like, okay, that system might work for you, but I am not going to bother getting up on the ladder, taking down the box, opening the lid, putting everything in, putting everything up. It's never gonna happen. That system might work for you. That system does not work for me. I need it to be within reach. I need it to be easy to put away. Do not try to force yourself into an organization system that requires you to change all of your habits. Instead, we're gonna make a system that supports the behavior you already have. 
For example, the kids, the kids' toys, they're all over the place, all the time, every day, and I can yell and scream at them all the time and tell them to organize and tell them to put away when they're done playing, but they're still just gonna be kids. And they're still just gonna have the, the system and the habits, like we can work on it a little bit, but there's only so much you're gonna change people's habits. Instead, let's get a giant bucket that we leave downstairs, and when we see things scattered downstairs that really don't belong downstairs, they actually belong upstairs, instead of telling everyone all the time to take their things upstairs, just tell them to put it in the basket. Fine, it's down here, but throw it in the basket. And when that basket fills up, then we're taking it upstairs and unloading. Maybe you need a catch-all basket just in your bedroom. And when the clothes come off and you're changing outfits and doing 12 different outfits, you know you're never gonna have the time to put them away. You're never actually gonna put them all away in the moment when you're trying to get an outfit on. They'll just go in the basket. And when the basket fills up, then we go and unload the basket. But in the meantime, it's not chaos. There's contained chaos. We're gonna contain the chaos. Stop trying to force yourself to make a system work that is not working for you. Don't let anybody tell you how you have to do things. <laughs> Okay, I've been doing a lot of screaming here. Out of compassion. I, I, it's, all, I, it's all compassion. The fury is compassion, because I am you. I've been this person. And I know how, like, exhausting it is to be exhausted by your own habits, to be exhausted by your own space. There's already so much negativity that you're probably already putting on a hoarding tendency, a disorganization tendency, a cluttering tendency, you're already putting plenty of judgment on it, probably. So, actually, please try not to layer more negativity on top of it. I'm not judging it here. I, I see it because I relate to it, and there's no need for additional negativity. There's so much emotion imbued in every space in our home and in every mess in our home. In my closet, sometimes I'm going through a phase where there are too many clothes overflowing the drawers everywhere because the truth is I'm in like a really negative relationship with my body at the moment and I don't like how any of the clothes look on me but I also don't want to give them away because maybe I'll like how they look on me later on or maybe giving them away would be a way of rejecting my body or like there's a million ways to go with this. This story told just by my closet and like it's already emotionally wrought. It's already stressful. It already breaks my heart. I already feel negative about it. There's no reason to layer more negativity and more judgment on top of it. These messes become piles of emotion. So give yourself a break and give yourself like some freedom from that emotional burden. Try to look at it with some positivity of like the excitement of getting to give yourself a clean office to work in. I'm gonna go through and give myself a, a brand spanking new bedroom that I'm excited to curl up in and feels welcoming and feels cozy. Put the positive spin on it. Or if you need to go through and do a big purge to get rid of a lot of stuff, a, can be extremely emotional, extremely upsetting, extremely sentimental, and just really hard to do. A really great thing you do is like, have a friend over, bring a sibling over, get a witness, get a witness. When I'm going through my closet and I'm like, I swear to God, I need all of these different t-shirts. First of all, I don't even wear t-shirts. I don't need a single t-shirt. Why do I have t-shirts? Bring a friend over and I'm going to hold up one t-shirt at a time and tell them why I'm holding onto this t-shirt. And when I say the words, my sister gave me this t-shirt 12 years ago and it never really fit and I got it stained and it's covered in blood and paint and I can't wear it anywhere but if I give it away I feel like it'll be a betrayal like it's some it sounds crazy and you hear why it's crazy and you can laugh about it and then you can give it away get yourself a witness get yourself a witness to talk through the pile of clothes with um, to talk through the pile of clutter with it's okay to like laugh at it all at once laugh at it and also make some constructive moves for yourself. Lighten yourself, lighten the burden. Because stuff builds up for all of us. We're really good at collecting stuff and I mean, we have a really hard time letting go of it. It's pretty universal. It's very understandable, very relatable. So I think it's just like these little changes. First recognizing that it's something we pretty much all struggle with at varying points in life. Uh, it's gonna ebb and flow. And it's something you keep an eye on have compassion for why it's happening, why is the mess building up. Maybe I've just got too much on my plate. I don't have to judge me for it. I don't have to throw another thing on my plate. Just like understand why it's happening and understand your own motivations for wanting to change it. I believe in you and uh, I would love to hear what 
organization methods work for you. People leave really good tips in the comments. I've gotten some of my favorite insights from comments. So if you feel free to leave stuff for other people there. And whether this applies to you or it makes you think of somebody you know, I hope it brought a, a little sense of relief, a little sense of hope into your home and into your crazy head today because you're a kook for sure. You're a crazy one. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you around the channel soon. Bye. Thank you again to Brooklyn for sponsoring. And if you guys want to check out the absolute most plush, softest towels I've ever used, there's a link in the description and you can use my code CarolineW.